All right, here we go. And in three, and and one. It's October 27, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Comes Out of the Bear Podcast. I've been sharing the links. Episode number 529. And... In this episode, we have a guest, Drew, who we couldn't get the camera working, so he's looking like David the Gnome. Papa Gnome in Uh the house. (laughs) (laughs) Try. (laughs) Welcome. Welcome, Drew. Thanks. These things I know. (laughs) well, in, in in any case, uh, in this episode, it is one of these. Let's talk about sex. Although, to, to be fair, we're kind of talking about the lack of? <laughs> Question mark? You know what? For someone who didn't know jack shit about what we're going to talk about today, you just, like, put it right there. You just kind of, like... <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, it's it's like I know what the words mean. Or I know what it, it it what the 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 specific phrase means. It's just I'm having a hard time comprehending this, like how somebody would be labeled like this. It, it's hard. I'm just I'm just well, having difficulty. To be fair, we're gonna get into the definition and stuff. I think it's self chosen as a label, kind of like bear or cub or you know daddy uh (laughs) so i mean an interesting conversation Mm. yeah (laughs) (laughs) we're laughing now but we probably won't be laughing later just just (laughs) just saying well it's not going to end in tears as far as i'm concerned there's no reason to cry no it ain't no No. (laughs) tea (laughs) (laughs) all right so uh for those of you that have already seen the title of the show you're probably like what the so we're gonna i guess we're gonna put our uh our preface our disclaimer at the beginning (laughs) of the show right now uh welcome to a show about four guys talking about something they really don't know anything about but we go break it down (laughs) <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna break it down and kind of go over some generalizations, I guess. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's let's talk about sex, and as Jeff said, it's kind of like let's talk about not sex. Um, so in cells, I N C E L S for those of you that uh, don't know quite what that is um, for spelling is uh, a portmanteau, which is like a combination of words of involuntary celibates. So uh, you may have heard of this before and probably not in a good way. Um, We'll end up discussing some of that, I'm sure. Uh, So incels are individuals that define themselves as unable to find a romantic or sexual partner despite desiring one. Um, A state that they describe as inceldom. Um, Not inceldom. That's probably something completely different. Um, (laughs) How would that work? I have the sign up sheet. Oh my gosh, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> Drew! <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> well, I was thinking that the Dom makes the person not, uh, you know, no. feel no, the thing. No. 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 <laughs> we are not going to break this down. Look, <laughs> look it, 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 let's just refer to the fact that uh, Damon is currently wearing a consensus my four play shirt. Which means that it wouldn't be involuntary uh, for it because he would have had to provide consent before 
the Dom uh, uh, enforce the, uh, the celibacy on the sub. So Good. that would that not be fine. involuntary. It would be voluntary so, because yeah. they provided consent. Yes. If it's yes. a good dynamic. Yes. Like that would kind of, I mean, Jeff kind of hit it on the head. It's really, it's very, no, I don't, I, I can't honestly see it being possible for an involunt- involuntary celibacy in a DS kind of relationship. Because in some way, shape or form, someone is consenting to a command or request. You know, they've they've agreed to be in the DS relationship, thereby providing given a, yeah by, by voluntary sort of for, nullifying yeah. all so, terms and agreements and here bore a signed contract. Jeez, oh, Louise. <laughs> Funny. See, that's right. <laughs> that's how to get in out of it. <laughs> all right, all right. So, so here's here's the 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 dealio, and I want to like kind of give some folks some historical reference, only because where things are in the modern day now is not where things are when this term kind of got coined and how things came about. And I think it's really important because I want us to talk more about the concept of incel versus uh, the politics of it. And we'll, I'll probably get into that a little bit. So for those that aren't aware, back in uh, 1993, a Canadian university student, uh, only known by her first name, Alana, created a website to discuss her sexual inactivity with other people. And uh, the website was titled Alana's Involuntary Celibacy Project and was used by uh, all genders to share their thoughts and experiences. And then in 97, she made a mailing list of the topic, abbreviated I-N-V-C-E-L. And then a later, it was it took the V out and it was called Incel. Uh, so she stopped participating in her online project around 2000 after she realized she was queer and became comfortable with her own identity and, uh, supposedly according to Wikipedia, um, gave it the site to a stranger. Now, why you would do that? I don't know on the internet. Um, but in 2018, she said, uh, it definitely was not a bunch of guys blaming women for their problems, which is kind of the current version or concept people have of incels. Um, Mm -hmm. So knowing that historical, I was kind of like, okay, that's very interesting because mm-hmm. me conceptually feeling like people don't find you sexually desirable and you yeah. feel like you're an involuntary celibacy, like it's being forced upon you by society at large or other people. I get that. The, yeah, the like the misogyny and all the rest of the stuff that's come about and like people claiming it and then doing horrible acts in the name of it is a yeah whole other pieces like, whatever so when we first started um just to kind of when we first started talking about this as a topic that was the thing i thought about this was like i thought this was generally just like that whole like perception misconception ideal that you are not considered attractive are desired therefore you are in this involuntary celibate you know moment where you don't you know engage in activity with other people because of this like self-loathing and it kind of you know circles and cycles around um Mm -hmm. in that well that's what when i when we first started talking about this topic that was the first thing that came to my mind as what this was and again reading more into it and learning more about it i've learned that that's not the full picture (laughs) right so before we get into why drew is a part of the show um (laughs) i want to talk just in general about this concept because there are times in my life i kind of felt this way and by that Mm -hmm. i mean i felt that people didn't find me desirable so i felt like therefore i was forced into being celibate like do you know what i mean like being um Mm -hmm. or asexual or something like i know that's not the right term to use but you know what i mean like i felt like nobody was expressing interest even if i was expressing interest outward like it wasn't Mm -hmm. being reciprocated so i kind of felt like i was being uh i don't want to say punished or anything but you know like you know I think mm-hmm. there's a point where you're kind of like, all right, you only, you can only take so many declines, no's, no responses, whatever. Um, you know, new phone, who dis? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you're kind of <laughs> yeah. like, 
what gives? Yeah, and it, it, and you mentioned it. Uh, asexuality is basically kind of the opposite view of incels, because incels mm-hmm. are are thinking it's not because I don't want to; it's just I am, and um, asexuals are just I don't want to. Period. Right. Mm-hmm. It's my choice versus it's not my choice. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Point. True. Yeah. Choice is kind of the point the the big thing of the matter here is this it's for a lot of these for this incel mind is that they're 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 not choosing to be celibate. They believe that it the choice has been made for them. Right. Like like no one will find me attractive, no one finds me desirable, therefore I will never be able to do or be with someone in that in a sexual passionate or romantic way mm-hmm. which i mean i think in some ways you kind of maybe had those thoughts especially you know around as you were learning yourself about your own um sexuality and your your desires personally you may have kind of felt that way like no one finds me interesting or attractive you you're a well, we'll just, I just use bears and us as and me and for an example, you know, some of us were were um, awkward, geeky, you know, sometimes bigger, you know, type guys, and that's not what was seen as attractive, um, you know, on TV and on popular culture, mm-hmm. in popular culture, etc. So you did not see yourself as someone who would be desired by others or wanted by others. So maybe you. Maybe didn't go all obviously down to full like slippery slope into incel, but you were very much like that. You know, no one's going to be able to do anything with me because I'm never going to find someone, and um, blah blah blah, so forth and so on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I agree with you, Gary. I think some of us have had that that mental like framework where it's again like I call it the cycle of like you know. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm striking out left and right. You know, no one's finding me attractive. No one's finding me interesting. I'm trying to talk to people. I'm putting myself out there and I keep getting, you know, knocked down. So I don't end up being with someone. I end up being alone and maybe I'll be uh, forever alone. And then, oh, well, maybe I'll try again. And again, the cycle mm. repeats itself and, mm-hmm. Um, I know there was a time. No, not really. Actually, I think after. <laughs> well, I had. Well, when I was in high school, I was very much like a not active person, but that was because I wasn't sure exactly who and what I desired. I knew I was. I knew I had some attractions to men, but I wasn't one hundred percent sure about that. And obviously, my background would not allow that. So. Uh, I was like, well, let me see if I can try to be with him. And, and that didn't happen <laughs> or work out in any way, shape, or form. I mean, thank God. But, well, no, that's not true. Let me go and say it like that. <laughs> but, but, you know, like, woo, yeah, I know now, knowing now what I know, what, if I had known now what I knew then, or you got it, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, anyway. I think growing up, everyone has at least a small part of that happen to them as you mature and grow older and learn about yourself and others and have those doubts about yourself about Mm -hmm. am I going to be alone the rest of my life? What's wrong with me? Any of this. I mean, finding ways to deal with that and realize, Mm -hmm. you know, you grow and evolve and then some people trying to find a way just to blame why that, why you feel Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think for, go ahead, Damon. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, um, I think that, like, it's interesting now to know at this point in my age, like, that there's a term in a way that kind of describes this concept. But I think there's a big difference between, like, the feeling of it versus mm-hmm. claiming it versus, like, being labeled it. So, you know, like, I mean, and part of me thinks sometimes, like, when you feel this way, that you may not have found your tribe, like, as the as the mm-hmm. current zeitgeist kind of references things like where do you fit in have you found your thing whatever that is 
Um, for us, we come very much biased from a certain perspective. Maybe, you know, it's about BDSM, which involves leather and kink, or maybe it's, you know, you're, you haven't determined that you're more comfortable being a furry or, you know, that you, uh, actually, um, kind of are more in between all the things and don't necessarily have one specific, you know, primary kind of. Uh, thing that calls to you and that's a journey that we all take in our lives you know like I bef I mean I came out my freshman year in college and then was like oh okay I sort of feel better about myself but I also don't like myself um, and to be fair like the, the gay community was a bit tumultuous in a way I think at that time it is not what it is now where I think there's a lot more positivity to things um, you know this is pre-internet we didn't have, you know, the It Gets Better campaign at all of these out celebrities. So you really kind of felt uh, still repressed in that time frame. And it wasn't until seven years later that I found out about the bear community. And then I was kind of like, oh, OK, yeah. like I kind of feel like I have a place. Um, it was a bit overwhelming at first because when I found that place, it was uh, a complete like 180, like where I felt like I went into a gay bar and no one really ever paid attention to me or gave me like the time of day or nothing. And then showing up at like a, you know, a bear potluck activity and everyone being like, Oh, who's the, who's the new meat? Um, who that, <laughs> who right. that, who that, <laughs> mm. Mm. Right. <laughs> so that was, all the yeah, that was a bit of a mind fuck. So, uh, so you're, it's, it's the difference between like, discovering yourself like you know there's something missing and you're not getting what you're expecting and trying to find that that place which is more of i would almost say dry spell or just discovery phase of your life versus the oh yeah i i know what i want i know what i'm comfortable with it's just i'm not finding those partners to be with whether it's sexually romantically or what have you That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's something that we're not aware of, that there are those things that exist specifically about the like, well, maybe if you are in th into like sociology and psychology, you might be more aware of like the, the chapters of a human life and like, you know, discovery and those kind of things. But I think in the in the lay way, I, I knew nothing about that, you know, that that was a, a thing that was expected and, and to go through. Um and so, and I'm not saying that this, uh, I don't think it's something that everybody necessarily goes through as a point of clarification. I think there are some people that smoothly transition from like discovering themselves and their identity and then having no, uh, you know, no concerns or issues or I don't want to say problems, but you know, mm -hmm. they just don't have that experience. They put themselves out there and people respond, um, you know, in a, in a positive way or whatever. So, um, <clears throat> that being said, Drew's a guest on the show because he actually reached out to me. This was quite some time ago. Um, but <laughs> I wasn't really aware of it. Cells, honestly, Drew, until you said something. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, what? <clears throat> um, and then, like, the more I learned a little bit about it, at the, I think around the time that you had reached out to me, you know, a little soon after, I was kind of like, oh, but I learned a lot more about the, I, I guess, I don't want to call it political, but, like, the not-so-great side of it, like, in terms mm -hmm. of the, dark. the attitude, right, the attitude, and, like, you know, there's a whole online culture, and mm -hmm. it's... Anger and hatred and... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so I was like, okay, that's interesting. And I, I think I was a little gun shy on the concept because I was like, I don't know how to talk about it other than maybe sounding like we're all like, you know, what a bunch of bullshit, um, you know, or uh, you we're know, all confused. Yourself. Yeah. Cause you said it and it's one of those things where I think there's some people where we'll think of things as especially like this, this sort of thing, I think. Say, think, uh, what? No, 
that's not possible or, or complete denial of it. And in me, it was just, I just sat back and was like, I can't, I'm having a hard time grasping the concept. Like, how does right. that work? I, you know, and while well, some are, some people are just like complete denial over like its existence. That's, that's a bullshit thing. And I'm like, well, maybe it, there's a real thing, but I can't, grasp it like uh yeah. and th this is to kind of uh kind of connect it to other experiences like this is um non-binary uh when i first found out about that i was like having a hard time grasping it just because my life has always been binary to begin with mm -hmm. and you know I've but i also think that, that so. uh, in in the in your case mm -hmm. and I, well everybody's cases everyone there's phases to everything how far you get through to one to the other where you may have gone through quickly is like yeah that's why i don't understand it because i get a i'm already to z where me even though i've been i guess single 15 plus years i can see where a lot of this on the if i wanted to call myself that it's because it's more of my choosing now which now then doesn't make involuntary i know it's because of some of my choices so I can't mm -hmm. choose that, but there's a lot of people who don't get to that point to have that realization that, you know, the way I present myself or how I come off to people or how I treat people or anything like that has an effect on how I'm interacting, how I'm connecting with other people. So for you, you're already past that. You were like that blip. Yeah, I'm done. I get it. So to see other people who don't, you're like, it's not that hard. You know, I so it's it's interesting because, I mean, I know even at 52 you know I, occasionally I, I think and i have those questions that pop in it's like is this ever going to happen but then i mm. i know myself it's not for me to blame anything else but just to understand where i'm at in my position in life what i'm willing to and not uh not accept in my life or people wise so it's yeah it's a big gray area mm. uh -huh. And I think it, even those people who, who label themselves as uh, as an incel um, probably aren't in that phase where they haven't like done some self examination, being like, "Well, is there things that I'm doing that I'm choosing that is really actually making this more of a, a voluntary thing, or am I just feeling like I'm trying everything I possibly can and just I'm not getting any hits and Right. And in with the conversation, Gary, and I got some examples from I've met three different people who have tried to identify like this. So, I mean, we'll, we can get into that a little bit later. But well, no, I mean, like that's that's kind of the whole thing is, I guess, what surprised me about it initially was I presumed that it was a a in a binary concept, a heterosexual male issue mm -hmm. like that they feel. Oh rejected that they feel you know that women just don't find them desirable blah 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 blah. and i was just kind of like and there and i honestly i was just like writing it off to like okay girl whatever you and your drama like <laughs> <laughs> i mean fair well i mean you know i was just kind of like you're probably not looking in the correct places or you're you know being very insular in your world and then recently i just watched the tv show episode uh, for those of you that uh, watched it, you'll know what I'm talking about on uh, how to get away with murder on uh, ABC. There was a client who was found to be an incel and they actually mm -hmm. discuss it like briefly as a part of the plot subject. And I was kind of like, okay, Sean arrives, you go like, <laughs> you know, like she it's just kind of brought that up out of the blue. And I was kind of like, oh, that's uh, ironic. <laughs> it's, it's also funny that you mentioned that, Gary, because I actually watched an episode of one of my favorite shows, Law & Order SVU, in which this was a topic. Um, there was a whole episode about someone who was um, an incel, and they were doing things like this as a – to get back at it, – it was, it was very interesting listening, watching the episode because it – they brought this in as part of the topic of the reasons for why it happened, mm -hmm. but it wasn't because they were all apparently to summarize the episode really quickly. Um, it was three men that had agreed to basically um, target people that were in relation to someone else, one of the other guys. So like 
this guy was done by this woman, so this guy will take, you know, attack her. And um, and then that would be kind of the things. That way they couldn't get caught. Whatever. Um, mm. And it, it just was very interesting. They were all part of this um, in-cell community, online community. That's how the, the police kind of put it all together. Um, and um, it was and funny. The episode based on some stuff that actually happened in California, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a whole thing about getting back at the girls who turned them down and catfishing mm-hmm. Um, to to teach them a lesson to be nicer to guys and mm-hmm. insane. Yeah. insane. Yeah, it's scary. It was it, it was very interesting because that's kind of when I, I mean not recently, but I've as I read more and then this episode especially kind of brought this whole like other side to involuntary incels that I wasn't one hundred percent aware of, and I'm like, oh well, this isn't necessarily a. I don't want to say bright and sunny, like this wasn't going to be a bright and sunny topic, but this wasn't a totally like, oh, I get that there's another side to this. There's a definite like darker, potentially, you know, more um, violent part of this. So, yeah. It's kind of a sexual frustration thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think that that that's natural, like that. that uh, I don't want to say natural. I think that that's possible with anything. Like you could, yeah. you could claim anything, you know, to be a motivation as to why you do something that's like mm-hmm. hurtful to another individual. So, sure. yeah, I mean, that was so. Like, and I think like that's what most people are kind of aware of when it comes to uh, the concept of being an incel or. Um, you know, is that the, it, they feel like they have to claim it because it's been thrust upon them because no mm-hmm. one's, I guess, like reciprocating or seeing them a certain way. Um, I don't know. So, Drew, let's talk about like the experiences, you know, or <laughs> I, I'm going to apologize for this. I didn't realize there was more than one person. I thought there was just like the one. No, the it was one one, and there's been two other sets. The other one I just blew off because it's. I can get into that, but I just want to make one thing clear, too, is there are some legitimate incels that are specifically deal with medical reasons, physical reasons why they can't find themselves or be in, a, in an intimate relationship, whether it's mm-hmm. uh, uh, drug, physical problems. I mean, so there's a legitimacy there at some level for some, mm-hmm. but I think that taking it over and trying to claim it for something or making it fit um, I just see it as of trying to not really understanding the term or trying to mis- misuse it um, to fit what you're feeling. Um, so just put that out there. Uh, so the first time I I uh, came across this was a gentleman I was talking with online who then uh, decided to tell me, well, he he's an incel. I'm like, you are? So I... I tried to dive into it because the way he was talking, it it didn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. And it was he went on and then tried to explain, well, because of his religious belief, he doesn't have he just not going to have sex until he's in a relationship and all this other stuff. I'm like, so you're actually confusing, you know, um, abstinence with mm-hmm. being an incel. That's that's your choosing. You're choosing not to do that. You're not being forced to not be intimate with somebody because they're out there they are you're saying no so that was a choice so that was the first thing the first time i had this i don't get it interaction you don't understand of using a term that you don't have any knowledge of but oh i it means i'm celibate because i don't have a choice i'm like well you do have a choice so after about 30 <laughs> minutes of conversation with him I, it kind of got through to him and he understood and said well then maybe i'm not and I, in my head, I'm just going, oh, my God. <laughs> and Thank God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> yeah. So and then the second time it happened, um, this is probably about a year ago now. First one was about a year and a half. Uh, this other guy. But he claimed he was forced, to, forced into being celibate. And he never, I guess, initially used the word incel, but he kept saying how it was He's forced to be celibate and he can't do this. But he was always, it always seemed like his conversations were always angry. He always complained because he couldn't hook up on the apps. Nobody wanted him on the apps. 
and mm. it was just always this negative stuff. But then when you look at his profile, it's all no fats, no femmes, no oldies. And I'm like, oldies? What am I, a 45 record? I mean, <laughs> but I mean, it, it, he had this list of things that were absolute no's. And it was just all a very negative portrayal of himself. And on my thought, it's like, well, if you're going to come off as sort of angry and very demeaning of other people, I'm not going to find that attractive in you. So for him to sit there and saying he's being forced at because nobody likes him or wants to even give him a chance yeah. is where I had another encounter like that. Uh, quick foot, choices. Quick yeah, footnote for all you young people. A 45 was this vinyl record that oh my God. At, at 45 <laughs> RP uh, rotations per minute that you would put on a record player and a needle and it would play. It's kind yeah, of like right. a DVD, except instead of a light, it's a needle. Anyways. And Drew could technically be spun like a 45 if you wanted to treat him that way. But... <laughs> Dead or alive, baby. Spin nope. me right round, right round. Like the record. <laughs> I, see, I was thinking the exact same thing. That uh, joke was uh, right there. Uh, uh, you can spin him oh right man. around, baby, uh, right uh, around. Uh, oh my god, you guys are awful. I'm <laughs> Sorry, you said that, so and I'm like, two main ones that I've come across. Um, I just, it was hard for me to understand and grasp because, like I said earlier, you sort of sometimes I know I've. I can have doubts, but I know I'm past that, and I know where I'm at in my life. But mm -hmm. I know that I'm responsible for my own happiness. So if I'm looking at a spot that all it's doing is me make, making me upset or sad or lonely or angry, you know, mm -hmm. I need to change my approach of where I'm looking and what I'm doing. Yeah. I think it was very funny that you mentioned – or not funny, but it was very interesting that you mentioned that, like, the, uh, there are two examples, for example, to me were – not really involuntarily celibate in the grand scheme of things. They were kind of, I mean, one was, it was religious beliefs. And I, like you said, that was kind of more abstinent than, than necessarily, you know, involuntary, you know, you were, you were following a relig religious beliefs and tenets and you again, chose to follow those religious tenets and beliefs. And therefore you are celibate or whatever, um, abs are abstaining from sex for those reasons, and and then for the second one, he's not really. I don't want to say celibate by choice. He's kind of celibate because he's a dick. But yeah. you know, like, <laughs> like well, well, I mean, no, no, never mind. His choices, the the his choices in in how he wishes to try to find someone were, I mean immediately you know, not immediately but for the most part we're we're turning people away and off from them and then you wonder why you weren't finding someone well if you're kind of putting it into a very small circle of people that you want to like you can be interested in then you know i mean that one i could see more be, being more quote unquote involuntary celibate um in the grand scheme of things, because, you know, the, of the whole, like, the darker or worser things for these, you know, reasons why there are some in, you know, in cells or out there, you know, um, the, you know, self-loathing, self-pity or, you know, resentment and all those things. I think it's one of those things where if you're feeling like you're an incel, um, you can definitely go ahead and label, but then take a moment and set set back and maybe even talk to somebody, either a friend, family member, or even a therapist to kind of examine why you're feeling that way and see if there mm -hmm. might be something that might, you know, break you out of that. Um, maybe you're feeling involuntary when you realize, oh, actually, I'm just not interested. Maybe you're actually a asexual um or or something i wouldn't say it's necessarily any sort of like condition i don't know um any of our psychologist friends uh might be able to mm -hmm. come back to us and say so it if this might be some sort it, of disorder or possibly it is not i mean reading the um uh wikipedia page it says involuntary celibacy is not a medical or psychological condition 
Some people who identify as incels suffer from physical disabilities or psychological disorders such as depression, autism spectrum disorder, and body dysmorphic disorder. So it, I'm just reading the very first sentence. I didn't want to go too far into it, but that's, that's one fine. of those things where it's it's not necessary. It is not a mental or psychological condition, but it it may be a there may be other so factors that are getting yeah. into that position. Right. Yeah. So there may be well, a mental or physical. Go ahead. And I think there's a big thing to like understand about like here are the things that probably should be considered the flags like to mm-hmm. be aware of that may not be the good stuff. Um, apparently a lot of online communities talk about like resentment, self-pity, um, racism, misogyny, like narcissism, um, the belief that men, and it mostly is about men, which I find really interesting because it was started by a woman. Yeah. Um, you know, that the, that the man feels that they're owed sex. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's revol- conversations revolve around like loneliness, being unhappy, um, you know, and, and like some of that I get, like, I connect with that. Like, I understand like being single and being lonely and feeling like unattractive, like, you know, not everyone is, you know, the, the paragon, like the, the ultimate of desirability, you know, yeah. not all of us walk around the world and have everybody spoon in our presence. It's, so. a, it's, it's <laughs> the, it's the long, it, it's the extreme form of a dry spell. Uh, I, Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't necessarily I disagree with that. I yeah. mean, like, it's it's awkward to think of it as a dry spell, but, you know, it's like, um, but, like, I think it's a two-way street. It's kind of like how you're treating the world. Like, no mm-hmm. offense, people people find confidence sexy. We've talked about that before on this on this podcast. Like, there's a physicality to, to sexiness, yes. You have to look at a person, you have to find them desirable. Like, is it possible to have some sex with someone who you don't find desirable? Yeah, but then you're really kind of going through the rote motion of things. At which point, personally, I'm kind of like, why? Like, just masturbate. Um, <laughs> that's just kind of how I feel about it. So, you know, but the – so if you're feeling that people are not finding you desirable, that's another thing. Do you know what I mean? And I think that um, I think that you know you you may not realize that you are creating your own environment, especially when it comes to your attitude and your behavior. So if you're focusing on these like uh, not forward evolving you know human concepts, um, yeah. you know about being a better individual and being kind to people and you know and and being approachable and thankful i mean just you know a whole bunch of stuff you know and you're kind of like if you're i think if you're very much like self-centered i don't know how else to say it like if you're very much focused inward then you're not giving anyone any opportunity to like Mm -hmm. be involved with you or be maybe want to be interested in you yeah it's the it's the you know to, well, I think that's kind of it. Like, it's to me, it's always the matter of like, what are you doing to to bring yourself, you know, out there and be available. And I know there are people out there that that do try and do put themselves out there and and sometimes get rejected. But the question becomes, what is part of that rejection, and how does that rejection make you feel? What are you doing to to to? I don't want to say change yourself, but to like you know, maybe see some things about yourself that may be difficult. The one example that Drew gave about the guy that mentions like no fats, no fems, no no oldies, et cetera, et cetera, you know, no oldies. Like who says that? <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Let's put an age range and get set the fuck up. Um <laughs> to, to go like... back to a previous episode quickly uh, in regards to this. Some of the best things to do on your on your profile file is is don't necessarily say what you don't want, say what you're looking for specifically. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know because and you never know, there may be somebody that's kind of outside in the nose that might you might find attractive anyways. There's a yeah. little bit uh, heavier than normal, but hey, they're hot. Yeah. You know, that sort so, of thing. So <laughs> 
I'm so I'm sorry. I have to derail for a second. I am so hung up on this oldies concept. I'm like, what? You hate poodle skirts? You hate guys that look like you know in biker <laughs> jackets that look like James Dean? Like, <laughs> is there is there something wrong with the with, with the king of rock and roll? I mean. <laughs> If, if you, you got a record player, I don't want nothing to do with you. <laughs> like, if you love the movie Grease, you are immediately written off. If you, <laughs> just like, I, I don't know how much old uh, is Grease. And, and then what's even worse is like it depends on how old you are. Because I'm like, I right. really we're talking sort of about the 50s. And I was just driving with my dad yesterday uh, doing some shopping. And we, there's a new radio station here locally that plays oldies. And I just realized it plays 60s, 70s, and 80s. Like, it doesn't even play the 50s. Like, nope. So I'm like, oh, dear. That's... Yeah. Uh, anyway. So well, Drew, I... was, that, was the first guy that you spoke to, was he the one that was the most, uh, I don't want to say vocal, but like described things the most or kind of uh, explained things or was the most in-depth? Because I, I don't know, like. He wasn't really in depth. I think he saw the term and and had the word celibate in it, and he just equated it to himself uh, because of his thing. Uh, so he threw it out there like, "Well, yeah, I don't really look for sex because I'm an incel." And I'm like, "You don't look for sex because you're an incel, right?" Um, That's not how that it's works. It, yeah, it's contradictory. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look for it and don't get it, not you don't look for it, you don't find it. Well, of course. Um, but so it was, to me, it was more of just, uh, he was open about it, but he was just, it was an open misunderstanding. He wasn't right. as vehement mm-hmm. as the other guy who was like, you know, just hating everybody or the third guy who wasn't as bad as the second guy, but he was just like, you know, everyone on here is too good. They're all stuck on themselves. You got to be body beautiful. And I'm not oh. all about that. And so it wasn't the negative, no fast, no fans, blah, 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 <laughs> but it was just, Everybody thinks they're too good. Yeah. So, and I'm like, why are you it, on here? Or you're not looking in the right place, too. Right. Well, that was my point. Then why are you? And I actually, I think I actually asked him, then if you don't like who's on here, why are you on here? And he's like, well, there's nothing else around here. And I'm like, well, then I got nothing to say to you. And maybe yeah. it's your attitude. Like, <laughs> like, yep. I mean, I, I hate being that way sometimes, but that is sometimes the case. Like, if you promote art, you will put out there a very negative, you know, vibe and what have you, then don't be surprised if no one wants to be, want to be around you. Like, I hate being that way, but that's the way I feel about it. Like, if you are negative, then you only, no one necessarily wants to be around that. So you are right. kind of creating your own self-destructive path, as it were, you know, and, right. and mm-hmm. on the same tone, you know, Sometimes we, you know, people don't need to be dicks to people, you know, don't mean to be like losers and whatever to, you know, to people. But I think having a self-awareness of yourself, too. I mean, like, yeah, last last guy, he got mad because everybody wants young Twinkie boys. And I'm he's I think he was like mid 50s, late 50s. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, equate this. If you're looking, you know, I'm if I'm not an athletic person, I don't go to the gym, but I hang out in a gym chat room where everybody's looking for workout buddies i'm not their type i'm in the wrong demographic for people looking for yeah. workout buddies if i'm not a workout buddy you know and you will I look get and, you might and, find that attractive but there's another area you that you should probably be following instead of going in a place that's not quite in like gary said your tribe i'm not going to go to a straights convention and try to hang out with the straight girls because hey you know and then complain because i don't get lucky Oh, well, I mean, fair, but I will <laughs> well, take I out mean, straight women because they're fun sometimes. <laughs> well, I was just thinking of like, like, you know, it's like, it's like you go to a drag brunch, you know, on Sunday mornings to go cruising. Right. Girl, if you're looking for a, a Dom daddy, that's probably not the place you're going to find one. It's not oh, that they oh, don't might. exist. I know. I know. Let me finish. <laughs> there's, probably a, there's probably a drag queen that like also could be your you know your dog daddy but that is not the time and the place in the moment that's, <laughs> that's what i'm getting at like you know she's got that snm performance outfit at home waiting to be used well i mean it's like oh let me go do the 5k for alzheimer's while i'm also expecting to find you know uh you know uh sugar daddy or sugar mama what like 
Maybe, but that's probably not like the path to take for that. My point of these analogies is like perhaps like the way you're going about things is what really should be looked at, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, there's it, it it there is a concept of like luck in a way, but it's about what you're doing and how you're approaching things. That's what my experience taught me. Like Going out in my local community to try to meet people was one thing, but what I realized is I was kind of looking for something more, and that really didn't exist. So you've got to figure out, hopefully for yourself, if you have that experience, you know, and now I think with the internet and technology, there's much more uh, ability to find a tribe, but I just don't know if this concept is perhaps, you know, the correct one for people, especially when you're, when you take it to such a negative Um you know, and, uh, you know, I hate to say turn to the dark side, you know, but like really kind of make things uh, about, you know, other people and how they're treating you. Um, there is a point where, yes, that people are not always the nicest and they can be cruel. Mm-hmm. But I mean, this this kind of goes back to like sometimes I hear people talk about like the things that happen and they're like, you know, I got into this disagreement on Facebook or blah, 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 blah. And I'm kind of like, why? 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 What are you doing? Like, what? Are you doing? Like, there's, there's a, there's a, there's an old word cartoon from Dilbert that I love, and the last frame is the, one of my favorite things ever, and it says, you know, sometimes you, when you see a pot of crazy, you don't stir it, like you just leave it alone. <laughs> That's gonna be my Fair. next. <laughs> so, <laughs> you see a pot of crazy, don't stir it. Right, like you just. <laughs> Just leave it alone. If it's gonna boil over, get the hell out of the kitchen. Avoid it. Like you know, if you didn't create it, don't don't be getting involved in it. Mm-hmm. And I feel that way. Like you know, that people, um, I think they just don't know how to define themselves and their world enough to like put up those walls. Or, and I don't really. Well, I guess it's walls. Like you know, to create their bubble. Like to be like you know what? I don't want you in my life. I don't need whatever. And there's and there's and it's taking me a long time to like not want to fix a lot of people or to help them really. Mm-hmm. You know, fix is pretty strong, but you know to be like shake like, them, shake them go listen. Oh my god. <laughs> True. <laughs> no, I mean but you know like I I have a very kind of like caring nurturing kind of concept, but one of the things I've had to learn is like not everybody wants to be helped. And oh, no. and or not everybody is ready to be helped. Right, and or can be helped. You know, at least my mm-hmm. You know, like I have limitations. So, you know, I've learned to just keep things at a distance and leave things as they are. And I find, you know, people that I connect with, like the person that sits next to me at work, um, I would have never in a million years thought that this is a person that I would get along with. And it's not that they're a bad person. It's just like my outside perspective of them, you know, looking at a, at a cover of a book, which I should know better. I was like, I, well, this will be interesting, you know, and then like, <laughs> that we hang like we're at work so often and we talk a lot. And I'm just kind of like, you know what? This person's really interesting and colorful, you know, in a way that I kind of prejudge unfairly. And like, I've realized that we kind of have the same wavelength of thought on some things about some other people. At work. And <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of like, okay, like, you know, we can commiserate yeah. on some stuff. You're a size queen too? Oh my God. Look at well, that. Well, yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> There's the van. You know what, Drew? <laughs> The invitation to be on the show was not about you being a sheep bitch. By the way, that is not true. Uh, they <laughs> identify themselves as heterosexual. So, anyways, um, just because they're that, heterosexual doesn't mean they can't be a size queen. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> I had to think about that for a moment. Anyways, uh, my point is, like, you know, you you kind of find your place in a way if you're willing to do that i get it it can be tiring and exhausting like to constantly put yourself out or to consistently do so and then feel like you're being shut down um but i think that's kind of what the broader like the gay community and then all the subcultures within and you know in some communities it's what the bear community you know it's like people find themselves and yeah everything's evolving and we're going through this stuff now i mean i think it's something we've been trying to identify on this podcast is you know there's all sorts of people uh, that are welcome to the table to have a seat. You know, it's mm. just about recognizing what the interest is and what's going on. I just recently met a, um, let me think about this, 
because I'm trying to remember how they identify themselves. Um, a non-binary uh, queer individual who is uh, biologically a woman in a relationship with another woman that has a child that does drag and is in le- into leather kink and has friends in the bear community. I mean, if we're trying to do, you know, the bingo card, I think she she got a whole bunch of, of things checked off on that. She's not trying to. My point is, I was kind of like, She wow. bingoed a couple times. She she had a whole lot of things Which that sounds like, like a sexual innuendo, but still overachiever. <laughs> <laughs> she like uh they sorry uh using proper pronouns um they were you know uh, really interesting to talk to but i i was kind of like oh like you know you're it's taken you in your own journey to like find and, and do this stuff mm-hmm. and so the reason why they are on my mind is because that probably was not an easy thing to do i don't think it ever is for many of us you know that's it's kind of where we come from this and my hope is for those that like are learning about you know in cell uh in cells and in seldom that we're more understanding of like conceptually like what what it is uh, a little more importantly about where it came from because yes i think it's quite possible for any of us to feel like there are times for varying lengths of time that we just can't connect mm-hmm. with people or you know many times i just can't it has nothing to do with anything else but i just can't <laughs> yeah and i'm thinking and i'm you know going along this the thread is like this is kind of what i feel is the situation with this is they find this community these incels find this community online or what have you and it kind of as i think i was reading in the um wikipedia page like it kind of like like again draws them in and then they find people that are of similar views and values and and unfortunately this is the tribe that they find and um mm. it kind of unfortunately feeds into that negativity that they feel about themselves because they're there again there are others that are kind of talking about and being the same thing feeling the same ways that they are and it can essentially go to the you know worst case scenarios where they um you know we've we we, we talked about that there have been um you know, mass murders and what have you based on this whole involuntary celibacy that these pe- there are people out there that have done these things in the name or in regards to their them being in cell and claiming that as such. Right. And and the, the unfortunate side is that, you know, what journalism has covered, I'm not going to say is unfair, but it is a little skewed because what they're focusing on is that some in cell communities are quote unquote violently misogynistic. And, mm-hmm. you know, that that concept, that thought process, you know, becomes part of like what people have termed or, you know, discussed in terms of like alt right and white supremacy and like it overlaps with hate groups, you know, and, and, and so there's all this stuff kind of going on. And I think what's most important is for people to understand, like, if you hear about like incels and, and seldom to try to not box it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and mm-hmm. think of it in such the, in the, that radical or kind of whatever concept. Um, because I think like it, it's, it's easy to do that. In fact, as um, this individual I was just talking about is we were having a discussion. I said, you know, we live in such a, a concept of, you know, our way our brains work. Everything needs to have a label. It's easier to understand it to like, you know, to wrap our minds around it when, you know, I can say, oh, this individual person, I know their name is Damon, as opposed to, like, a symbol, you know, mm-hmm. that, like, where I have to try harder and put in more effort to be able to to make a, you know, a connection, a relationship of some sort. So I think it's the same thing that with individuals that if they describe themselves this way, I'm hoping that, you know, they are self-identifying in a way that is you know positive as opposed to the negative if that mm-hmm. makes sense and that people are more receptive like or at least willing to not you know jump the gun immediately and be like oh great you know i expect this to be nothing but you know a, a craptastic conversation or whatever mm-hmm. and the, so w- would you consider that um uh in seldom is possibly a just a essentially a temporary condition so 
Yes, and I I would say yes and no. Mm, I yeah. mean, just reading what I'm, you know, just, again, reading what I'm reading and knowing some of the things and not necessarily going to the further, like, the extremes, it could potentially be something that you are you have put upon yourself. And it could also be something that you, for one reason or another, may be a cause. Like, the, you know, um, as Drew mentioned, there are some people for medical or physical reasons or mental reasons may not be able to engage in um, sexual activity. And that's kind of, you know, it's not, again, there's nothing they did per se, you know, or, you know, had hap- something happened potentially. So there is a possibility that it is something that will be a permanent condition for them. Um on the flip of that, you know, there are people that I think honestly are are choosing to follow this path and choosing to remain in this way because it in and of itself feeds on some of their probably, you know, thoughts and um, feelings about stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the the interesting aspects of incels and inceldom is that there's a an a general, I think, understanding or uh, acceptance that individuals who feel this way may have extreme introversion, meaning that they are so introverted that they they don't see themselves uh, being interested by anybody from the outside, but they're also not doing anything like to make that possible. So it's kind of going back to what, Damon, you were talking about earlier, like it's kind of this cycle. You know, it's kind of like nobody mm-hmm. finds me attractive and nobody is interested in me, uh, you know, therefore I don't put myself out there, <laughs> you know, or I'm <clears throat> that's, you know, uh, self insecure. I don't feel that good about myself. So, you know what I mean? Like, and I, I think that that's a, a thing that could go on and become permanent or it could be temporary, like to what you're talking about, Jeff, I think, mm-hmm. <sighs> Really, it's undefined because it's very much like a personal journey. And whether or not you actually do anything about it, I think, is the more important thing. So, like, interestingly, like, uh, we've made reference, and it'll be linked uh, on our um, uh, website, about the the Wikipedia that we've been referencing. Um, what I find interesting is that it's referenced that many incels engage in self-diagnosis of mental health issues. I think that makes sense. Um, but we have to be careful about that. I mean, it's kind of like the the running joke that everybody goes to run to WebMD the moment that something's wrong with them. And then you find mm-hmm. out that one of the, one of the uh, outcomes is death. Um, <laughs> hello. Like, yeah, everything can cause you to die eventually. Um, so, <laughs> you know, like, be careful, you know, about um, finding things. I mean, I feel that way a little bit about like the bear community in some ways. Like I've met people who are kind of like, oh, the bear community isn't for me. Well, that's fine. Like we don't make you pay dues. You don't have to get a card. Like, <laughs> you know, there's not necessarily a secret handshake. Well, that's um, off my to-do list now. <laughs> One less stress thing. Well, there you go, Drew. See, like you don't have to worry about trying to get all those points to get that toaster. Um, Three more stamps, and I had an official bear card. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> bear bingo! <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the reality is is that. Well, just to you... elaborate on something you said earlier too about yeah. you know finding help or have you, I think it's finding the appropriate place too because. Mm-hmm. Going to like a website where you're finding other people who are just as mad or angry as you are just feeds into each other and doesn't help you to solve the problem. You just feed in. Yep, I believe it. That's the same way with me. And it doesn't change anything. And and if it is something where you're feeling like that and you're getting a community, maybe one of the things is to talk about and talk with people about why do you feel that way? and uh, see kind of narrow down uh, what possibly might be factors that that get you into the situation and figure ways to uh, get out of it being like okay well all right so what are 
you interested in and uh, maybe even help uh, if you help other people do some research into, you know, what might be a factor that's that's causing it, that's getting you into this situation that you may find your, in and of yourself your solution to the situation as well. Yeah. Because I, I really feel like like uh, uh, incels is more of a... I really feel that it's like a temporary condition because I always believe that there's there's always somebody out there that's attracted to you. You just need to be... You just need to find it. Uh, you need to get in and actually uh, search for it. Um, I'll and... send you my resume later. Exactly. <laughs> um, so it, and sometimes you need, and sometimes you just need help, uh, looking for that or, or just realize, Hey, the current, my current state, financial state or, or uh, uh, location or something. Um, the, the only reason why I'm voluntary syllable is because none of the people around here are people that I would be interested in any of this, this way, even if I get onto the right apps or something, um, and then at that point, once you find the right place where you can actually talk to somebody who might be attracted to you, maybe they're halfway across the planet. Uh, but then you find out that there you are. There's somebody that's attracted to you. And while you can't necessarily meet up necessarily, that's unnecessarily way too much. Um, it at least is, I would almost say, might might get you out of that because... You don't necessarily have to have physical sex to say that you're celibate if you think about it that way. I don't know. Right. And there there are some people that, like Damon had been referenced to, there are some people that physically are, um, I guess I want to say, very limited in having sex. And that may be, you know, something that's considered more permanent. Um, but even so, I think that... Um, it's pretty, I don't want to say extreme, but specific in cases where that isn't possible. Most individuals can have a physical intimacy. It just may not be what most people think of in terms of, mm -hmm. a, you know, a standard concept of a sexual, you know, experience. Um, you know, I think about individuals that are differently abled. So maybe mm -hmm. they're paralyzed or they're paraplegic or, you know, there's some condition for them physically. It doesn't mean that they can't be intimate. It just may mean that the intimacy is different. Mm -hmm. So whether or not that, yeah. like, qualifies them, uh, what a horrible word, um, whether or not that applies to them in terms of, like, the concept of being an incel, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, that, very much for me, this is, like, do you apply the label to yourself? This makes me think of like someone I knew a long time ago who was like, well, everyone calls me a bear, so I must be a bear. No. Like, just because everyone, you know, looks at you physically and is like, oh, you must be a bear. It doesn't make you one. Um, so, like, you know, I think that this really is more about self-identifying than, uh, you know, what other people say you are in that case. Too true. Hey, guess what, folks? I think... That's the end. Oh. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, do you identify yourself as an incel? And let us know and uh, give us some feedback as to why you feel that way. And, uh, and maybe we can give you some non-professional advice. We are not professional therapists. Um, no. But you know what? There's plenty of ways to contact us to let us know that. Uh, you can pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Leave a comment on the blog. Shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 COL Talk. Yes, we'll even take serious voicemails. You, you don't have to be sexy. You could be absolutely serious. Ask questions uh, vocally. Uh, you can also shoot us a, a, a voicemail uh, to our email as well. Um, you can find us on various social media outlets at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, YouTube. And uh, you can also chat with us in our Entourage chat uh, where there's always things going on. Links shared, uh, hot guys shared, me uh, drooling over pictures uh, during the World Series. 
at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can subscribe to our Google Calendar on your computer at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Once you've got it connected to your Google Calendar, you can then pull it up on your app. Uh, you can support us in many ways, such as getting either a consent to your four play shirt that Damon is wearing or a uh, not your sticky, here's your cookie shirt uh, that I'm wearing, as well as many others, including taking you on a mouse adventure shirts. I believe I got that <laughs> up, finally, um, which are some newer sh- shirts that we have all at our Zazzle store at Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you can also support us by just becoming a patron uh, at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you can uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us through Google Play Podcasts, and also find us on Spotify. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box Set, Box Puppy, Box Gub, Box something or other. Um, if you wish to find me, and you know you do, uh, you can find me at Theater Cup 79 on most um, bear related sites um, and also Facebook, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And Drew, if anyone wants to find you, get in touch with you, actually touch you, maybe, I don't know. D, uh, <laughs> all the above. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 411 Growlers for all Facebook, Instagram. You can find me as Drew the Wandering Bear. Woo! Yay! And uh, with that, uh, uh, do I have this in the right order? I do. Say goodnight, everybody! Good night, everybody! Good night, everyone! Have a good one, y'all. We got at least four. Eh, that's all right. It happens. <clears throat> I liked your picture so Forget much. Forget it. Like... <laughs> but everybody's Sometimes. gonna think I'm a silver daddy now. So. <laughs> but you are, Blanche. You are. <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> I'm glad Damon did it. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's okay, Drew. It is um, <laughs> one of the things I've, I've learned, especially now, is that Skype is not awesome. And because literally, when I when I signed on, um, I had an update, and I was like, "Oh, great, yay, another update!" And well, greatly, it didn't last how long. Often, thing, how like, often do you open uh, open Skype? I mean, um, like, once a we week. <laughs> Me. <Maybe. laughs> So I think the last time I did it, went, the camera kept the light kept turning on. So somehow I turned it off, um, mm. and I, that's the last time I actually used it. I everything seemed to be powering up, and then it just all of a sudden said webcam not available, not found. So hopefully mm. I did like delete that app or something. I don't know. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the next however long it takes to find it, get reinstalled on my computer. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. I can. I mean, I know. Um, Jeff mentioned it, but can other things or other um, programs find your um, camera? Uh, well, see, if I go to the camera itself just to turn it on outside of Skype, Skype it says the same thing. <laughs> Webcam not uh, not detected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in Skype it says not detected. Mm-hmm. So, like, And if I go to my settings and devices, video device is not there. Hmm. So yeah. It, yeah, it's probably you may just need to get a an, an a fun new like 
camera that you can just, just plug yeah. in and be done with it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Pro- probably the easiest thing to do. Especially since it's not finding it at all. Because right. if nothing is finding it, then that's a sign that the camera is either damaged or or something along those lines. That's what I'm thinking off the top of my head. But my luck is I'll go buy one, plug it in, and I'll say, "Hey, you've got two cameras." <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> It, that at that point you can return the camera that you bought, knowing that, that, oh, that you hell fixed no. I'll, it. I'll keep it as a backup going forward. <laughs> sure. Oh well, I, I should get the it. one that this is. This is the one that Gary and I use. This oh, can you read it anyway? C920 HD Pro Cam from Logitech. Logitech. Yeah, Jeff, yeah. I have a Logitech one too. I don't know. I got it a long time ago. Hey, guess what? I'm stop 